Welcome to the What's New video for version 11 of Aspire, where we're going to give you an overview of all the new and improved features that we've added in this release. This video is intended for existing Aspire customers who have recently upgraded to the latest version and only includes details of the incremental changes and enhancements to the previous version of the software. If you are new to Aspire, then this video probably isn't the one for you. Instead, please take the time to watch the extensive support and tutorial videos provided with Aspire to help you get started. This video is broadly divided into six sections, focusing on the main areas of Aspire. Drawing, 3D assembly, 3D modeling, toolpaths, and general items followed by enhancements that have been made to the laser module product. In each section, we'll give you an overview highlighting brand new tools and a summary of enhancements and extensions to existing tools that you should already be familiar with, along with minor changes that have been made, usually in response to specific customer feedback to improve workflow and fix problems that have come to light since the previous release. So let's get started. We've introduced a new option in the set size tool to allow you to resize vectors within a selection on an individual basis, allowing you to resize multiple vectors to a specified value or percentage, which is very useful for projects where geometry requires specific size changes, for example, slots and circles. Simply select the vectors that you wish to resize and in the set size form, use the option to scale items individually, where you can enter an exact value or alter the size by a percentage. This option is the perfect solution to ensure that we can easily alter the size of multiple parts to work with different material thicknesses in slot together style projects. When creating vectors using the polyline and draw curve tool, you can now take advantage of the undo shortcut to be able to easily undo incorrectly positioned spans. Simply use the backspace key to backtrack through each step of your drawing. In various text entry fields within the software, spelling errors will now be underlined in red where you can locate the correct spelling from the right-click menu to automatically replace the incorrect word, ensuring that the software corrects you before you notice the mistake whilst machining. We've also included the ability to add new words to the software's dictionary too, so you can add in awesome words like Vectric. You can remove unwanted words from within the Vectric dictionary all at the click of the right mouse button. The spelling feature works within the draw text and draw text within a box tools, as well as note entry fields for your project and within the tool database. The ability to spell check is also supported across the many supported languages that we have available, ensuring that spelling errors are corrected whatever language you're using. It's now possible to delete multiple layers from the right-click menu within the Layers tab and the Layer menu in the View toolbar, where you have the option to delete this layer, visible layers, invisible layers and empty layers, providing you with plenty of options to quickly erase unwanted data from your layers list all at the click of your mouse. When using the Edit Text Spacing tool, you can now adjust the spacing between all characters for the entire line in one go. To do this, simply press the Alt key whilst clicking with the left mouse button. This will bring all of the characters in the line closer together. And to increase the spacing, simply hold Shift and Alt whilst clicking. This spacing also works for whole line text that's on an arc or aligned to curves in your projects. This enhancement makes it quicker and easier to turn all of the characters all at the click of a button.
The relief slicing feature now gives you the option to choose the thickness of individual slices. Where they can be tweaked and visualised in the 3D view to give you maximum control of how your model is sliced ready for machining. In the form you can choose to slice from the top down or bottom up where you can specify exact slice thicknesses or take advantage of the 3D view controls to interactively adjust the slices to how you'd like them. This helps to ensure that there are no thin slices that can be problematic from a machine and assembly point of view. When nesting in the software, it is now possible to nest components across multiple sheets. We've also added the ability to nest both components and vectors simultaneously within your job. Perfect for projects that have a combination of vectors and reliefs within them. We've made significant improvements to the way that we handle third party models where you now have the ability to re-import the model after the initial import. Once you've imported the model, simply right click on any of the imported components and use the option to re-import, where the software will take you back into the import 3D model form where it stores the settings that you previously used, allowing you to make further adjustments without having to delete the imported model and go through the import setup all over again given you the ability to go back and make quick adjustments to get your model ready to bring back into the software. When importing third-party 3D models, we've added the ability to segment the model into parts to help minimise the loss of detail or undercuts that can occur when importing the model into your session. Simply import your model into the software where you can interactively segment the model all from within the 3D view. You can position and adjust the angle of the segment plane giving you complete control as to how you break up the model into their individual parts. As well as having the ability to interactively segment the model from the 3D view you can also enter in precise values from within the form. The parts can be easily visualised individually and within a layout mode, so you can view how the models will be imported as a relief prior to import. In the layout mode, you can control the orientation of selected parts, as well as having the ability to visualise where the undercuts of a model are currently present, to help you identify problematic areas that could be potentially resolved at this stage through further segmenting. And with your model segmented, you can import all of the parts into the software ready for machining. The sculpting tool has been improved to include the option of using any model that you have made previously and saved out as a custom brush for use with the sculpting tools, giving you the opportunity for an unlimited selection of brush styles that suit your needs. The component brush option can be used as part of the deposit and remove tools where the brush will leave an impression in the composite model that simulates the pushing of the component brush through the surface when dragging and a stamping effect when clicking. You can also use the dynamic rotation option that intelligently rotates the brush in the direction that you are sculpting, so that you can easily add texture and detail to your overall composite model. Simply model up your component brush in the software and when you're happy, right click to save it out as a component brush that you can then load up right from within the sculpting tools where you can click to stamp your brush or glide the brush along to push it through the material to create a composition and add those finishing touches. To get you started, we've included a 20 piece brush set that you can use right away in your sculpting projects. Custom profiles can now be used to create shapes from within the Create Shape tool. 
This custom profile will behave similarly to the existing profile options, allowing you to control how the created shape is built up. Simply select the vector you wish to create a shape from, select the custom profile option and shift to select your vector profile to view your brand new custom shape. This new addition allows for an unlimited set of profile options, giving you more control over the shapes that you create. We've introduced a new sweep option within the final height section of the Create Shape form. This will take the chosen profile, either one of the pre-provided or a new custom profile, and it sweeps the vector inside any selected closed vectors. When used in conjunction with the custom profile options, it can be used to create complex custom shapes with decorative boundaries. Rest machining is a technique which uses multiple tools to try and efficiently optimise machining time, material removal and the longevity of your tools. Within the 3D Finish Toolpath, you now have the option to use more than one tool, with each smaller tool removing any remaining material that the previous tool was unable to machine. The rest machining technique can be controlled using the slider, where you can choose your minimum detail anywhere between a coarse and fine finish. This determines what areas are worth machining with the smaller tool. Rest machining can be used to help us machine 3D parts more efficiently. The 3D raster strategy in the 3D rough and toolpath now has the option to avoid machined areas. This will mean that if an area has already been machined by a previous pass, then the current pass will try to not remachine this area. For some types of 3D models, having this option checked will result in shorter machining times. When using the 3D roughing toolpath, there is now the option to specify a raster angle that no longer restricts you to the X or the Y axes, helping you to avoid scenarios where there is excess material left for the finishing toolpath and giving you more control over the direction in which your 3D parts are roughed out. In the Molding Toolpath form, you can now make use of the Automatic Vector Selector options, allowing you to automatically select the rail and profile vectors for machining. Simply assign the relevant layers for automatic selection for both the rails and profiles. This also means it's now possible to save Molding Toolpaths as Toolpath templates, making their creation easily automatable for a much quicker workflow. In the Chamfer Toolpath, we've introduced a new overcut option, which enables you to use the side of the tool to make the final cut along the edge of the chamfer. This helps to ensure that the tip of the tool stays off the finished part. For example, if you were using a V-bit tool that doesn't quite have a pointy tip, then by overcutting we can help to eliminate these unsightly witness marks that would otherwise have occurred from the flat of the tool. We've also added the ability to specify the cut direction for your chamfer, where it can be set to either conventional or climb machining, helping you to achieve the best possible results with your chamfer projects. The VCarve toolpath allows you to use a series of area clearance tools to help remove excess material. Previously, you could only apply a ramp plunge move to the first clearance tool. For this release, it's now possible to apply a ramp plunge move for all end mills and other types of clearance tools for which the corner sharpening option is unchecked, helping to reduce the chance of your tools breaking and can reduce the wear and tear on the tools. When pocketing regions using multiple tools, the software is now much more likely to skip the areas that have been machined with the larger tools. 
This helps to ensure that we don't cut more than we need to and the smaller tools only machine away in places the larger tool could not get to, helping to reduce tool breakage and in some cases this will result in faster machining times. We've introduced the concept of sheet creation and management to organise your work, where you can create sheets yourself and control them through the Sheet Management tab. Each sheet can now become its own self-contained project within the same project file, making it an ideal solution for when you're working on a project that requires multiple materials. The new Sheets tab lists all of the current sheets and allows you to create, update and delete them. You can create sheets of different sizes and thicknesses as well as having the ability to control the material appearance for each sheet to help better visualise your toolpaths as part of the overall project. All sheets within a project can be managed individually or collectively, making it simple to resize or update a specific selection of sheets. This concept makes it much easier to manage your multi-materials projects all from within one single session. When nesting parts in a multi-sheet project, you can choose to nest to specific sheets all within the nesting form. With the ability to keep hold of your initial layout, ensuring that you can nest your parts to the appropriate sheets for machining, but still have access to your original design, keeping it safe should you want to make edits to your original layout at a later date. Version 11 significantly improves the management of your CNC machine, its capabilities, for example, rotary or laser add-ons, associated post processors, and default tool cutting feeds and speeds for a selection of materials. As always, our software is fully customizable for those who want to have full low-level control, but Vetric's new Kickstarter wizard can also help you get started with a set of tools with reasonable initial settings using our constantly updated online list of the most common machine brands and models. The Kickstarter wizard not only ensures that you have the right post processors and machine configurations straight away, but the new management system also allows you to optionally stay up to date if relevant newer post processors for your machine are released in the future, all from within the software. When working in a two-sided project, you can now take advantage of the new option to swap sides right from the edit menu, where the software will swap over all of the content that is on one side of the project to the other, making it much easier to swap over your project data at the click of a button. The laser cut and fill toolpath has seen improvements to the hatch fill option. When selecting multiple vectors in your job to hatch fill, you can now specify to fill together or fill regionally. When using the fill together option, the laser head will fill out selected regions in one motion. In some cases, this would result in faster machining times as the laser head doesn't need to slow down on a per region basis. The fill regionally option will fill in each region before moving on to the next. We've also added the ability to specify whether you want to outline your hatch fill too. So now you can create hatching that would simulate shaded areas without a solid outline. 